Hi, I'm Tim Blue Flynn Rammel. I'm Bad River Chippewa and Comanche. I'm a flute maker, a second generation jeweler, and an educator and performer. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest and now I live in Northern California. I started doing art when I was actually quite young. I mean, my dad had one of the earliest pictures that I ever did hanging over his easy chair for years and years and years. And it was, I don't know, it was some kind of a cartoon or something, some school project that was done with felt cutouts and things like that, you know. But you have to remember that I grew up with, with artists all around me all the time. I mean, my dad, um, you know, after he retired from the service, I was still pretty young and he was an artist at heart. He dabbled in a lot of different things, everything from pastels to paints to stained glass. My grandmother was a well-known silversmith, um, you know, so when I, when I started in fine art, really with flutes and, and jewelry was Mm, I was probably 11 or 12 years old. Somehow my grandmother always knew that I was going to be an artist, even though I didn't. Um, and she would have all of her friends come in and teach me different, different things. I mean, I learned young how to tan hides. I learned how to do beadwork. I, you know, uh, I dabbled in silver work. Um, you know, and nothing really, really quite spoke to me. And my grandmother used to say, it's okay, you know, don't worry about it. It's okay not to feel comfortable, but it's important to learn the skills because you never know when in your life you'll need those skills to incorporate. So yeah, she always knew, she always knew. And then, um, and then I actually got away from it for oh gosh, probably 30 years, you know, working in corporate and sales and sales training and things like that. And, and, uh, and then slowly, I just kind of found my way home. When I started to learn silversmithing, it was literally when I was a young teenager, um, hanging around in my grandma's studio, you know, while she was working. And I just, it was fascinating. It fascinated me to um, watch her take sheet, sheets of silver and contort them and stamp them and move them and melt them and, you know, and, and create these things of beauty out of seemingly nothing, you know? Um, and we would talk and we would talk and we would talk and, and um, she would show me what she was doing and, you know, quenching and this and that and the other. And so 40 years elapses, you know, and now I'm going back into silver work. So um, here's what I learned. Um, everything is different. All of the techniques, all of the tools, um, you know, stamps of hardened steel rather than just, you know, uh, a filed rebar and, you know, everything is more technical with, with rollers. And remember, you know, she didn't cast anything. Everything was fabricated, you know? So, um, what's the difference? Oh, the difference is this. Let's start with what's the same. The biggest thing that's the same is the metallurgy. Metal still reacts the same as it did 40 years ago when you stamp it, when you heat it, when you melt it. Um, pretty much everything else is different. Well, I think what keeps me what what keeps me in it is it took me so long to get there, number one. Um, and it's it's an amazing community, the connections between people, you know, not only not only collectors and, and other artists, but gallery owners and just people that are interested in your work. So I think that's one of the big reasons. The other reason is I realized after I had been in it for a while, you know, my grandmother used to always tell me that 
it's there's stories that need to be told. And I think on reflection that, yeah, that's, that's part of the drive, you know, it's the collective memories, you know, and the memories of the history of our people that, that need to be told and need to be shared. And I think that that's one of the big reasons that really keeps me going.